<laughs> I'm sorry, you got to do it. I'm not doing it, man. I'm not working on a Ford. It's going to be a cool project, you know, retro engine. I lost all of my Ford wrenches a long time ago, and you know it. You'll have Ford Blue running through your veins after this show. No, it'd give me a heart attack. That's what it'd do. I don't know CPR. Today on Horsepower TV, we'll use some retro tech techniques to bring new life to an old Ford FE engine using a high performance rebuild kit, plus a new camshaft, aluminum heads, intake manifold, and more. Then we'll show you how to install a cool new sound system on your trusty old street machine. So hang on for Horsepower TV. All right, welcome again to the Horsepower Shop, where today we've got a real feast of Ford power for you. Speaking of which, how do you like this quick stang? Now, the builders of this thing took a real high-tech approach with a 525 cubic inch Paxton supercharged big block. Now, it's fuel-injected, nitrous-fed, and makes about 1,000 horsepower. It's a rolling showcase of performance parts that Summit offers, but it's got a lot of unique one-off pieces, too, like this trick rear spoiler, custom tonneau cover, and a roll bar that's been fab to fit with the top up or down. Now, this power bulge hood hiding this 1,000 horsepower monster, well, it gives way to a custom front end. Yeah, well, some of us still like to make power the old-fashioned way, so today we're going to use the retro tech approach to give some new life to an old friend. It's Ford's FE series, and it was their first big block. Now, while the 427 may be the most famous of the family, its smaller brother, the 390, has powered everything from early 60s T-Birds to trucks. Yeah, even though the FE engine has been out of production for more than 20 years, well, its popularity has soared so much lately that Edelbrock's come out with these aluminum heads for it. Now, aside from giving up 80 pounds right off the bat, it also has improved ports and 207 168 valves inside a 72cc combustion chamber. Now, with our flat top pistons, that's going to give us about a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio and definitely something we can run on pump gas. Now, we're going to feed our FE motor with their Performer dual plane intake. Now, it ought to give us plenty of lower end torque and breathe easy at upper RPMs, too. Now, we'll cap it with a 650 CFM vacuum secondary car from Speed Demon, but hey, enough about the top end. Let's check out the bottom end. We started with a 390, snatched from a 63 T-Bird, and as you can see, these old FE engines have a bulletproof bottom end. In fact, to show you how strong they really are, after more than 30 years of running, this old crankshaft didn't even need to be turned. We just polished it and balanced it. Before dropping it in, however, here's something you want to pay attention to. You'll notice the oil hole doesn't quite line up between the bearing and the main saddle, so we relieved the backside of the bearing to help make that transition. Now we'll have a good constant supply of oil to the bottom end. Once you've dropped the crank in, you're ready for the main caps. And here's a little trick. I like to add a dab of oil right here on the seal to prevent dry startups. And then just a dab of glue on each end of the seal. That'll help us prevent any leaks at that joint. We're using a performance rebuild kit from Summit that includes these flat top pistons from Sterling, Federal Mogul bearings, and a full set of gaskets from Felpro. Also, we got this high volume oil pump from Seal Power and a set of their rings. Now, here's a little tip for you. Use one of these installation tools so you don't damage the rings when you install them. Now, you want to make sure to index your ring gaps at least 90 degrees from each other that way you can control the oil and contain the compression. Each ring will have a little dot on it. Your directions will tell you whether to place it up or down for proper scraping action. Hey, how's it going there? Are you bored with that job yet? Yeah, you might say that. I've just about got them all wiped down. I guess we're ready for the pistons now. Good deal. Now, we want to make sure we give these new rings plenty of oil before we slide on our compressor. Then we can send that piston home. Well, the cam is next, so we ordered a mild hydraulic grind from Urson. Now, it's going to pull plenty of vacuum to run the accessories, and it's going to make good power up to about 5,000 RPM. 
Of course, while we had our nose in the parts book, we ordered a set of their matching lifters and double roller timing set. 63 was a transitional year for the FE engine. Now, ours came with these holes drilled and tapped for this camshaft retainer plate. Now, if you've got an earlier block, those holes come with a soft plug in there, and you're going to have to drill and tap them, plus order one of these retainer plates from Ford so you can use it with the later style camshaft. After we tighten down the retainer plate, we can install the timing chain straight up, the fuel pump eccentric, and the oil slinger. Now here's a trick to help you install this timing cover. I'm going to slip this sleeve over the crankshaft, like so. That'll keep the front seal all centered up. That way you won't have an oil leak caused by an offset seal. Well, it looks like Joe's got the engine ready for the oil pump here. Now, it uses a hex shaft that engages the bottom of the distributor, but we're going to plug it into the oil pump here first. Now, it's also got this little washer, and that's going to keep it from falling out once the pump is turned upside down. One more little final important detail, don't forget to install the gasket between the oil pump body and the block. Now, speaking of gaskets, I like to lay a bead of silicone right down here on the pan rail, not only to keep the gaskets in place, but also to improve the sealing around the rear main seal and up here on the timing cover. Well, that's it for the short block of our FE engine. We'll take a short break and be back to take on the top end. Later in the program, we'll show you how to tone up your street machine sound system with a cool new state-of-the-art kit. Stay with us. Welcome back to the shop and our FE engine buildup. Well, so far we filled our block with a Summit Rebuild Kit that included flat top pistons, performance bearings, and a high volume oil pump. Plus, we added a nurse and cam and timing set. That's right. Now we're ready to tackle the top end, starting with these cylinder heads. But first, we're going to go ahead and put on these Felpro Permator gaskets. Now, we just line them up on the dowel pins here, and we can add the heads. Uh, there we go. And then we'll cinch them down with these ARP head bolts. All right, I'll give you a hand with the other head. Well, what kind of uh, torque specs are we talking about here? Well, the instructions said about 130 foot pounds, so I guess I'll go get the torque wrench. Well, good man, thanks. There we go. All right, the intake can go on next. Man, who'd have thought that over 40 years ago when they introduced this engine that it'd still be popular enough today to justify these cool new components? You bet. In fact, while I was putting the lifters and the gaskets on, I got to thinking, FE, I think, stands for fast engine. <laughs> or fine engine. Really, could stand for finished engine if we get that aluminum intake on I like on that here. name the best. Yeah, let's <laughs> drop it down. All right, here we go, straight down. Good job. Our FE's firepower is going to come from this Mallory Unilite distributor and a high output coil. Now while we're at it, we'll go ahead and add a set of their Pro Sidewinder wires. Now this way we won't have to put up with those old fashioned points anymore, plus the increased ignition output, well that'll help our mileage and engine efficiency. Hey, great timing, no pun intended. None taken. <laughs> now, I'm just finishing up with these rocker shafts, and here's something you want to pay close attention to. Now, we ordered these adjustable rockers from Sealed Power, and if yours have balls on the end of them like ours do, well, you want to make sure that your push rods have a cup on them so they're compatible. Our FE is a cool old engine here, but we don't want to overheat it, so we're going to upgrade the stock water pump with this high flow piece from Edelbrock. Now, it not only pumps more water, but hey, it looks good, and it'll take a few extra pounds off the front end. 
We showed you this Speed Demon carb earlier, but here's a little bit closer look at it. Now, as you can see, it's a modular design, so it's going to be pretty easy to work on and tune. Now, here's a couple of features that we really like. Check out the sight gauges right here on the fuel bowls, plus it's got idle adjustments on all four corners. With all this Ford blue and lightweight aluminum, we thought we'd dress up this 390 with some chrome we got from Mr. Gasket. Now this blue oval bad boy is going to look and cook with the best of them. It really should, but before we finish dressing this thing up, I've got a little tip for you. The Sidewinder wires that we're using are a universal set, so we got to mark them, then cut them. Strip the insulation back about a half an inch using the tool that's supplied with the wires. Then bend the conductor wire back and lay it in the terminal. Now you're ready to crimp it. Now we're ready to install the boots. I like to go ahead and use a little bit of silicone spray right in the end here. That'll help us insert the wire into the boot. These nylon wire looms are the final touch in our wiring exercise. Now, they'll really help keep things organized. Well, that just about takes care of our classic muscle motor buildup for this week. Yeah, you'll get to hear this thing run in a few weeks when we drop it into another horsepower project. That's right. Now, we ain't saying exactly what it is, but bird's the word. <laughs> okay, we need to fly the coop for a minute for a word from our sponsors, but hang with us. Welcome back. Engines are at the heart of the high performance lifestyle. We like to build them, give them more power, and in some cases study their fascinating history. That's why because of a lot of requests, we're going to take you for an encore visit to a mecca of monumental motors we found called Speedway Bills. In the brief yet colorful history of hot riding, countless rides have cruised into the hearts and minds of car lovers. Rods that make your eyes pop out, street machines that practically make your heart pop out. And just as fascinating as these classic hot rods themselves are the landmark engines that make them go. From the first Chevy small block in 1955 to the time-honored Chrysler Hemi. Well, the history of hot rod power plants goes back even farther to the teens, when dirt track racers stimulated the growth of an industry and a newborn passion for speed. Well, this is Speedway Motors in Lincoln, Nebraska, where veteran hot rodder Bill Smith keeps his little collection, a collection that includes over 5,000 toy and pedal cars, an assortment of vintage racers, and maybe most amazing of all, about 200 restored antique and exotic engines, many that represent milestones in the quest for speed. These guys that did this stuff at that point in time were true home engineers, innovators. Uh, they took what was available and made it into something that was very competitive. It's a hot rodder's heaven. And Speedway Bill's got every divine gas-powered artifact from a Zora Arcus Duntoff designed flathead conversion to a split Hemi four cylinders built and driven by Mickey Thompson to set about 20 land speed records. Some of Bill's favorite and most significant machines were built by engineering pioneer Robert Roof for Model T racers. It's a 16 valve, two camshafts, two camshafts lay side by side in this box and bolted to the top of the head. It's gear driven up the front and uh, it's just a marvelous piece of of engineering for the time that it uh, was done. This roof creation was a 16 valve engine built for another Model T racer in 1916. You'll wonder where the rocker arm cover was. They ran no rocker arm cover. Uh, they ran it exposed, 16 valves, four valves per cylinder, two exhaust outlets, the museum features one of the best collections of engine cutaways, fully demonstrating the combustion engine at work. Of course, the Smith collection includes later motoring marvels, like Bill Mitchell's grafting of two Chevy small blocks to make one 16-cylinder monster. But most of all, it's a compelling testament to the imagination of early hot rockers, proving behind every hot car there's an engine 
and behind every historic engine, a genius builder. Next, bolt it down and crank it up. It's Stereo Tech Time next on the show. We'll make some noise with a new system right after this. You know, most of the time, the projects that we take on here at the shop deal with power that's measured in horses, but today, well, we've got a different kind of project. In fact, it's one that measures power in watts. What's the matter? You don't like my sound system? <laughs> no, man. I gotta be honest with you, this thing sucks. You're right. <laughs> Problem is, after nine years of rocking and rolling, this old stock system's tired of competing with the wind. But today, we got a sound solution for it. Well, let's take a look. All right. Now, we're going to start this stereo system upgrade with this acoustic head unit with a detachable face for security and dual pre-outs that make it integrate with any system. Then we'll add these MTX speakers that fit the factory locations perfectly and drive them with a pair of their Thunder amps that pump out about 350 watts. Of course, we've got this faceplate that's going to allow us to mount this head unit in the factory location and a wiring kit to help us tie it all together. Then, just to make sure that our stereo rumbles even louder than our exhaust, well, we're going to drop in this bandpass box that houses an 8-inch subwoofer. Now, all this gear just costs us about a grand and should take you about two hours to install. Well, that probably means about a day and a half for you, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you this project anyway, because i got to go get some freight down at the terminal. I'll be back in time for hot parts. Likely story, huh? Well, better get started with this head unit. Now, we need to take out the stock head unit by first removing a piece of trim and four bolts. Pull the old head out and disconnect the wires. Now we can wire up the new harness. This end connects with the stock harness. This end hooks up with the head. Next, after securing this dash kit to the cage with an L bracket, well, we just slide it into place. and secure it with our stock screws. Attach your wires to the head, then slide it into the cage until you hear it click. Then you're ready to put on this trim plate. Well, next we need to find a good place to mount our power amps and under the seats is ideal because here they won't get damaged. They'll be totally out of the way. There we go. Now before we connect our wires, let me show you something. This is our signal wire, which we ran under the carpet along the console. This red power wire along here. Now, the idea is to keep them separated to avoid engine noise. Good wiring is important, and our kit comes with this twisted wire setup that's especially good at rejecting noise. All we have left is to mount the speakers. Finish up our wiring under the hood with these fuses, then hook up to the battery. After wiring the woofer, you just drop it into the trunk. And now, for a real stealth look, you can custom cut a piece of wood like this, cover it with material. Check this out. How's that for a clean installation? Finally, just put this stock plate back on, power it up. Crank it up and enjoy. Sounds familiar. Now, Horsepower's Hot Parts, brought to you by Summit Racing Equipment, your source for high performance parts for 30 years. No matter what the application, Headers are proven power producers. Now, Edelbrock has developed a tubular exhaust system for most popular sport compacts. It's formed with heavy gauge steel tubing and has an extra thick flange for leak-free installation and a perfect replacement for your cast iron manifolds. Now, for under 400 bucks, 
you can give your import some good old American muscle. <laughs> well, behind every good header is a good exhaust system. For years, k and has helped you get air into your engine. Now they've developed a way to get it out with their new free-flowing exhaust system for light trucks and SUVs. That's made from heavy-duty stainless steel with mandrel bends, and it's 50-state legal, so uh, for about $600 in legal tender, you can have one for your hauler. Well, what do you say we change gears and take a look at a new shifter from B&M? It's the Ripper Shifter for late model rail type transmissions. It's a billet aluminum bolt-in replacement with adjustable stops and gate springs so that you can set it up to suit your own driving style. Now, the stainless steel stick is extra tough, plus it looks pretty cool too. And at about 160 bucks, well, the Ripper won't rip you off either. No, but we'd like to steal a moment of your time to tell you about next week's show. Get ready for a Horsepower TV special, the 23rd Annual Street Machine Nationals, with wild and quick quarter-mile drag racing, some of the most gorgeous show cars on the planet, and more. Can't get any better than this. This is beautiful. It's the Horsepower Happening of the Year and a power party you don't want to miss. And remember, high-performance fun is what this show is all about. Hey, man, you know, working on this old Ford wasn't too bad. Yeah, I told you. I bet you I still bleed Chevy Orange, though. <laughs> well, no doubt. <laughs> Horsepower TV is an RTM production.